the Hungarian Grand Prix provided an eventful spectacle, featuring numerous compelling stories. Among them, Alfa Romeo's noteworthy performance at the start of the week, Alpine's unfortunate first lap mishaps, an extraordinary streak of bad luck, and a high rate of retirements from the grid. McLaren's resurgence, with Daniel Ricciardo's remarkable comeback, was also a major highlight. Lewis Hamilton and George Russell demonstrated the age-old adage that success is not guaranteed on Saturday alone. However, let's delve into Ferrari, a team historically considered one of Formula One's top contenders. Over the past 15 years, they have struggled to match the dominance of Mercedes and Red Bull, leading to unmet expectations each season. Regrettably, these persistent issues haunted Ferrari again at the Hungarian Grand Prix, laying bare their challenges. The team's efforts to fine-tune their front wing for the specific track failed to yield any significant advantage against their rivals, Red Bull, McLaren, and Mercedes. Pit stop woes cost Charles Leclerc nearly 10 seconds, ultimately denying him two higher-placed finishes. Additionally, technical problems with the radios and driver's water further hindered their performance. Furthermore, the team's strategic decision seemed flawed. Though these issues are somewhat characteristic of Ferrari's current state, one could argue that the weekend was not an utter disaster, considering their starting positions. Charles Leclerc only slipped one place from his qualifying position, and that was due to a time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Carlos Sainz managed to gain three positions, compensating for a lackluster qualifying session. Despite the challenges, Charles Leclerc believed that Ferrari's result seemed worse than it truly was, given the myriad of problems they encountered during the race. He acknowledged the slow pit stop and the time penalty but emphasized that as a driver, it is frustrating when one's good performance goes unnoticed while mistakes are amplified. Analyzing Leclerc's race, factoring out the pit stop mistake and penalty, he could have finished ahead of the slower McLaren. However, such selective focus isn't fair, the entire picture must be considered. Driving for Ferrari leaves no room for hiding, as immense expectations come with the territory. Leclerc recognized that Ferrari must make strides forward, much like McLaren did with their car. The Hungarian Grand Prix served as a stage for various captivating narratives, but it also highlighted the persistent challenges faced by Ferrari. Despite individual moments of promise, the team must work collectively to meet the high expectations placed upon them in the fiercely competitive world of Formula One. Currently, we find ourselves on the back foot, and this has been confirmed over the last three weekends. There's a lot of work to be done once again. After finishing second two races ago in Austria, Lara has now taken ninth and seventh places in the following rounds. However, today's result feels much worse than it appeared. According to Lara, the first stint went really well. But the slow pit stop put them at a disadvantage, forcing them to push harder while trailing Lance. They lost some time while racing alongside Carlos, which brings attention to Ferrari's persistent strategy problems. Despite a change in management, these issues seem to persist. Additionally, Ferrari has been facing numerous radio problems. Lara explained that one out of every four words spoken by an engineer is not understood due to radio issues that have plagued them for the past three or four races. This ongoing problem is mind-boggling, as it hampers communication between the pit wall and the drivers. During the race, the two drivers were on different strategies. Sainz started on soft tyres and quickly caught up to Leclerc, who started on mediums. Despite being on different strategies, Ferrari did not allow Sainz to pass Leclerc. Later, when Leclerc caught up to Sainz and was clearly the faster car, Ferrari opted for an undercut strategy to get Leclerc ahead of Sainz. However, this resulted in Leclerc having a long final stint on used hard tyres, allowing George Russell, on new medium tyres, to easily overtake Leclerc after the five-second post-race penalty. Leclerc tried to communicate with the team during the second stint, expressing his desire to change the strategy, but the radio problems caused his message to be lost. This understandably frustrated Leclerc, who questioned the team's response. Ferrari's hesitation to swap drivers or refusal to make quick decisions during races has been a recurring issue this season, showing a fear of upsetting either of their drivers. After the race, 
Team Principal Fred Vaza acknowledged the problems and pledged to resolve them. However, similar promises have been made by Ferrari for years, yet the issues persist. Vaza mentioned that they need time to understand what went right and wrong due to the different race format, making it challenging to analyze the weekend comprehensively and engineer reliable solutions based on all the results. Allow me to explain, sir. I believe the main issue on our side is that we made too many mistakes from the beginning to the end of the race. It's not just about the pit stop, the pit entry, the performance in qualifying, or tyre management at the end. The potential of our car was probably better than what we demonstrated yesterday. During the race, we lost around 20 seconds due to our errors. I must be open and admit that we are making too many mistakes. Even if Toto Wolff were asked the same question, he might say something similar. However, it's a nice attempt to deflect from the situation, as Mercedes seems to be in a much better position compared to Ferrari at the moment. At the moment, Ferrari is in fourth place in the Constructors' Championship, trailing Aston Martin by 17 points before the Belgian Grand Prix. During the race, Leclerc and Sainz were competitive, but Sainz's performance dropped off towards the end, making it easy for Russell to overtake him. Clearly, we are not where we want to be in terms of race pace and overall performance. Even our one-lap pace hasn't been strong this weekend. Sainz mentioned that there is homework to do to understand why we were not as competitive as expected at this track. We will strive to make progress in SPA, and if not, we'll utilize the summer break to analyze everything and come up with a better package for the next races. It is what it is, and the focus is on improving our overall performance rather than just individual positions in the race. It has been evident for some time that significant changes are needed at Ferrari. The team's issues have persisted for multiple seasons, and it remains to be seen if the current management can address them adequately. Ferrari has been undergoing a restructuring process, and one of the notable changes is the acquisition of Mercedes' senior figure, Lowe, who will join the team in 2025 after his contract with Mercedes expires. Lowe has an extensive background in Formula One, starting his career as a tyre engineer at Michelin and specialising in suspension and vehicle dynamics. His experience at Mercedes has been successful, and Ferrari hopes he can bring the knowledge and skills that contributed to Mercedes' success during the 2010s. As for the Hungarian Grand Prix, some may argue that Ferrari's performance was better than it appeared, while others might view it as another disappointment. I would appreciate hearing your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, drive safe, and goodbye for now.